Hi, and welcome to uh, DFJ TV Hollywood. My name is Stephen Tinkus, and I'm your host. Today, we're going to be interviewing a good friend of mine, Bradford Smith, who is the founder and CEO of Moodum, a entertainment company focused on partnerships, storytelling, and technology. Welcome, Bradford, to the show. Thank you, Thank you Stephen. It's an honor to be here. I'm so happy to have you, finally, after all this time. It's safe. Bradford, when did you know that you wanted to enter the uh, entertainment industry? Well, it, it actually happened a little organically. Uh, you know, as a kid, I was glued to the TV late night and uh, I was raised by my grandparents and, and they would come in the room and go, boy, go to bed. You're up to, you gotta go to school tomorrow. Um, but so storytelling and entertainment has always been a part of my life. Although my professional career uh, was in information technology I was an IT contractor for several government agencies, and um, that was my professional trajectory. And then um, I had a shift um, in my life where I decided to focus on music and entertainment because it kept tugging at me, um, kept encountering, entering and, and encountering uh, situations that were music, film related. Um, and so I, I decided to take it seriously. Great, great. Um, that's a big undertaking that you have done and have accomplished. Tell our viewers a little bit about Moodum and the types of work that you do at, at your company. Yeah, so Moodum is a creative, creative digital agency specialize in storytelling. Um, our goal is to flesh out stories across multiple platforms and multiple mediums. And we do this for brands and intellectual property owners. I mean, storytelling is an age old mechanism in which we've been sharing information as human beings. And so what we get to do today is use the multiple platforms that are available to us to get the stories to different demographics and different viewers. Um, so we've been working with small business owners. We've been working with uh, storytellers, uh, people who have created fictional content, documentaries. Uh, so we get to take their story and um, present it to the audience on um, various uh, mediums, whether it's immersive like VR or if it's social media, uh, if it's a big, big screen through uh, streaming, um, so that's, that's our focus. And, and we really pride ourselves in uh, telling stories that matter to us because we want to shift the hearts and minds of society. So diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, minority topics, uh, ecology, and making sure that we are talking about what's happening in the environment, social justice, and also issues that surround the LGBTQIA uh, industry. That's uh, quite a full plate. Yeah, work. it is. <laughs> you work too. I hope that you have enough staff up on board. Well, um, the interesting thing is that with our agency, we work with a lot of freelancers and contractors. So there's a large pool of entertainment. I mean, we're interacting with talent that uh, that's in Eastern Europe, in Asia, uh, in India. So we're working with people all over the world to help us accomplish what we need for our clients. Bradford, what three projects that you've done at Buddha so far that have 
really made me proud and uh, sent a message that will educate your uh, followers. Yeah, so we work with uh, one of the projects that really was an entry point into uh, storytelling and um, it brought some diversity on the screen was the Black Salt Project. Um, we work with Owen Ratliff to produce uh, a screening for his short film, Black Salt, um, at the Los Angeles Film School. Uh, we also help him uh, promote the project um, as he combined his story role with uh, the story role of corruption, which is a, a, a game concept. And that, that game was developed uh, for the Steam platform for PC. Uh, really excited about the outcome of that. Um, Jesse Williams, the creator of Corruption, he's doing really well in the game development space. Um, a third project, um, we've been working, I, don't, I wanna kinda encapsulate all the work that we've done for small businesses and their brands, um, uh, developing websites for that they can uh, sell their products online. Um, so there's e-commerce features uh, available to their customers. Um, and then uh, we've also done some advocacy work. Um, I've done advocacy work on behalf of my company and our connection with the music industry. So we work with the Music Supervisors Guild and uh, their production of some of their their uh, conventions and um, seminars. We've also uh, done some advocacy work with the Recording Academy, where we get to go out and speak on uh, music rights and, and topics that relate to music creators. Um, there is five acts that actually sat down with uh, a congressman, um, Representative Raul Ruiz, who represents Coachella Valley. Um, we talked about supporting the American Music Fairness Act. Um, we asked Congress to pass the HITS Act. We um, asked um, Ruiz to stand up for protect free expression and support the RAP Act and promote music diplomacy and cultural exchange programs, as well as um, the LAC District Advocate, Advocate Business um, meeting that um, is, is uh, going to uh, occur constantly um, throughout the year. So we're not only just helping businesses, we're stepping out into the community. That sounds great. Um, I just want to find out from you uh, the message that you're trying to send out there through Buddha. Can you sort of talk a little bit more about that? Just like What's your educational goal for the public through your project? What do you hope will be a lasting effect? Uh, the lasting effect is that we all, we all are integral parts in this experience called life. And we are who we are as human beings because of our early life experiences. And sometimes those experiences aren't pretty. Um, they create traumas, they create bad behaviors, they create things that cause us to do things that are not in the best interests of our fellow man or fellow woman. So I don't, we don't care too much about marginalizing people. We care about inclusion. We care about um, showing that everyone has something to bring to the table in this experience called life. And so we speak on personal development. We want to work on top stories and topics that relate to just being the best version of yourself and getting over those blocks. Uh, we want to share stories and show that uh, the LGBTQIA community um, gets to be a part of 
all areas of industry, business, creativity. I think we are stronger together than, than separated. You know, being a black man um, and being a black queer man, and this is the first time that I'm saying this on a national platform, I'm being authentic. I'm being my true authentic self. And you get to see me as I am, and I get to show up big world and do what's right. There's so many individuals that have interests and not necessarily interests that benefit the whole, but what we want to tell the world is that I count, I matter, and I'm on the side of good for all. I applaud you so much for the work that you have done and continue to lead for your community because you're right, we're all a part of the same basket of uh, ingredients that make society what it is that society can only be positive by the energy that we put into it because we all want to live authentically. We all want to live free and we all want to be happy and healthy. Isn't that the most important thing that we yeah. have? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, it is. And I applaud you, Steve. Actually, I want to step in and, and give kudos to you for being so courageous to step up and really be a voice for um, the disability, disabled community. Um, you're able in so many ways, despite your challenges, to, 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 to fight through the challenges that you have medically. Like it's, it, it does not go unnoticed. And I really just want to give you thumbs up for that and being a great friend as well. Thank you, Bradford, as you well know personally, just as like you were open about it, about your uh, your life is that medically it's been a hard, hard summer for me, but we don't let that type of challenge stop us, do we? No, we and just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Take a lick and then keep on ticking. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Bradford, you know, it's been uh, a few years since Oscar's So White. And as you know, as a friend of mine, only 2.5% of roles on TV and film are people with disabilities. To our viewers, do you know that 95% of those roles are played by non-disabled talent? It's amazing that our wow. industry is so basically only 5% of the characters with disabilities are actual people with disabilities. And it's sad because I know for the black community, Black community is obviously higher, but we're all underrepresented, and it's such a money maker for everybody to be on TV and film. I I thoroughly applaud Ryan Coogler for Wakanda forever, which I'll see this weekend, but finally a co-star 
that is from Latin America. I mean, we really need that in our industry. So Bradford, what are some of the mechanisms in your profession, professional view that you plan to make as a producer, as a creative, as a, a lover of music? What types of uh, approaches would you like to take? And why, especially, I want you to highlight the struggle of the Black community and the LGBTQ community here in Hollywood? Well, uh, for me, I think the opportunity here is uh, when it comes down to casting, you know, where do we get the talent? We should be reaching out to casting agencies that represent uh, individuals with disabilities um, and incorporate them in the scripting. So um, I think that's an opportunity there. Uh, and the stories surrounding um, individuals with disabilities. Um, my grandfather that raised me, he had um, a, an early childhood injury that caused him to have a limp, you know, but he drove with his left foot. I mean, we drove all around Southern, uh, all around Eastern North Carolina selling uh, produce to, to the community. My mother um, suffers from bipolar schizophrenia and she's medicated all the time. I mean, she really enjoys music. She listens, she knows more about hip hop than I do. <laughs> Um, so as, uh, from the standpoint of who's able and who's not able, I don't think we should marginalize people. I think in our storytelling, we should incorporate real people with real disabilities and develop stories around their experience. Because I think all of us have someone in our lives that, that is either, um, that suffer from some disability. And um, when, when we look at the stories on the big screen, it troubles me sometimes when I see only Caucasian individuals in the story. Okay, do they, do they have friends? <laughs> do they have neighbors? Do they have coworkers? We're America. We're a melting pot of people. There should be a diverse story. It should be inclusion. All walks of life should be a part of those stories. So um, we, uh, we plan to incorporate um, diversity in all of our storytelling, whether it's through casting, through behind the scenes in production. Our team is very diverse. <laughs> um, so that's what we plan to do. And we already um, have a team that support that. We, we, we walk it. We walk the talk. Exactly. Now, Bradford, I really, I appreciate that on behalf of the uh, disability community. Can you talk a little bit about your communities and how you interact with creatives? Because I want to know what, what is your goal through Buddha for your communities? And what mechanisms do you feel will be successful in using as someone with your experience and stature? <laughs> stature is a big word. I mean, I, I tend to like to humble myself. But for my community, um, there is a gap, I think, uh, in we're, we're consumers of the tech, of, of the content, um, American culture, popular culture, historically has a, a great found has a foundation in um, um, the black American experience, whether it's R&B, soul, hip hop, rap, rock and roll, folk music. It's what we enjoy as people. Um, 
So not only as citizens of this planet, uh, we get to consume, but we get to be involved in the production. We get to be involved in the commerce and the entrepreneurship of this business. And that's what Muidam is here for, is to create those opportunities to connect with big Hollywood, to connect with the big studios, to let them know that inclusion has a, a huge return on its investment. Like we're on the edge of the release of Black Panther. Um, there's so much anticip anticipation and, and excitement surrounding this property. The Marvel Universe stands to win behind um, a huge cast, people of color. Um, I applaud people like Tyler Perry. I'm sure he's facilitating uh, that production because Atlanta's studios there, Tyler Perry Studios, um, they've, they've assisted in a lot of, of, of uh, partake in, in a lot of the production of some of these, these shows that we're seeing now. Um, and that is economy, those are jobs that go back to my community. And so I invite Hollywood to, to follow Tyler Perry's lead. They didn't give him a chance. He created his own table. He didn't have a seat at the table. He created his own table. Okay, here's an opportunity. Return on your investment, inclusion, allowing people of color uh, to participate, to be involved in business, Hispan Hispanics, uh, Asians, like everyone deserves a, uh, a seat at the table. I totally, and it's lucrative. I totally <laughs> Very agree. Very lucrative. I totally agree. I don't think Hollywood has the powers that be at the studio, studio level. I mean, traditional studio level understands how many billions of dollars that our community has ready to spend on projects that we can see ourselves in. And I applaud Tyler Perry, and I applaud Ryan Coogler, because, and for us, you and me, we're, we're going up against uh, Goliath, but members in our community support us because we're telling their telling their stories, and so I believe it's incumbent upon people like you and me and the support of IdeaGen to get our messages out so that when we are, you know, a lot older, that we can develop an even better generation of multi-diverse creatives that put inclusion at the forefront because let's face it, the world is diverse. We're just not inclusive enough to where we should be. So I want to thank you for your message loud and clear to Hollywood. Please wake up. Now, finally, Bradford, you've done a lot already in your career. What types of TV and movie projects do you have in the green room or do you have in development without without breaking any NDA agreement. What types of projects do you hope to get 
completed in the next two years that even makes a bigger contribution to our industry. Well, uh, Stephen, it, it's an uphill battle, but I think we we are uh, gonna come out um, champions. Um, but the types of stories that we're we're working on are docu related, real life stories about real people. Um, the budgets make sense because when you're hiring um, a listers, you gotta have the budget to pay these people. Um, so we want to start with uh, real everyday people. Um, we're also interested in uh, animated projects. We have a few scripts from some creators that's been um, submitted to us. Um, we do accept unsolicited scripts. Um, most production studios and agencies don't. Um, we want them, um, especially if they're diverse. Um, there's a, a life story of, of an artist that we've been looking at um, that dealt with uh, mental health issues. Um, don't have a, haven't, hasn't been greenlit. We're still looking for investors. Um, we're looking at talent. Uh, we need help there. So um, I'm putting a call out to uh, producers, investors um, to help us with uh, that particular project. Um, but I can't spill the beans on any titles or who we're working with. Um, but uh, we are here and accepting um, properties. So if you have an intellectual property that you want to share with us, um, you'll be able to find us at gomuidem.com, G-O-M-U-I-D-E-M.com. That's awesome. That's awesome. And we're, we're here at Idea Gen TV, Hollywood Dude here, that you are connected with the peers in the industry that share your vision. So we will ensure um, at the end of the show that your website address is shown so you can all help each other make a difference. Now, Bradford, are there any uh, closing remarks that you would like to share from the heart to our viewers? And how, besides the, the website, how else can they contact you? Um, I am available on all social media platforms. Um, I have a nickname, people in the industry call me, some of my friends, close friends call me Jazzy. And I have a billionaire mindset and a mogul mindset. So I'm Jazzy the Mogul on all social media platforms and you'll get different facets of who I am as an individual uh, and as a human being and, and me being authentic. But additionally, what I would like for the viewer community here that are, are tuning in to Idea Gen TV to know that life is, is not infinite, it's finite. And every day, every amount of time that you get is a present, a present from our creator. And it's up to you how you spend it. And um, don't take it for granted because tomorrow is not promised. And I hope that with the time that you've been gifted, that you show up big for the world, that you bring something to this experience that people will continue to say your name. I think there's an African proverb that says that you don't truly die until people stop saying your name. Right. Do something where people continue to say your name and say good things about you. Right. <laughs> right. Good things about you, make a friend 
every day, everywhere you go, put a smile on your face, think positive, and speak positive because what you say goes out and it will 1,000% return to you. And that's what we're doing through storytelling. Exactly. It's okay. It's okay. Like you, I've made many mistakes in my life, per, personally and professionally. But it's only a God said where you can learn from your past. Learn from your mistakes. Others, to teach others about your mistakes and make amends with people before time is too late because we all make a difference. It's a matter of our approach. And so uh, I share your your beliefs. And so I, I, I want to say thank you to uh, the founder and CEO of IdeaGen Global, uh, George Zavakis. Who could Thank you, George. Who could it be with us today? But he'll add his words at the end of the uh, show. But again, Bradford, thank you. And thank you. I, I look forward to working with you as a fellow creator and support your vision for inclusion for all. Thank you all for joining us today and happy holidays. <laughs>